Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Now, I know it's Thanksgiving week, but that doesn't mean we don't have new things to show you. I pulled some of the coolest new stuff to hit our shelves in the past week. Let's check them out. So before I get started, have you guys been paying attention to our Black Friday 24 hour sales? Right now, BFD number two is the Cold Steel Chaos Tonto for just $29.95. And this is running until noon tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day. So if you're watching this video on time, you can take advantage of this. If you're watching this video later, why didn't you watch it sooner? Maybe we will next time. <laughs> Cold Steel Chaos Tonto, $29.95. But keep following all of our social channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where you can see all the 24-hour sales, all of our BFDs as they come up. With that out of the way, let's get into the new knives. So first up is a couple of two, or a couple of two, two new steel wills, the Cobalt and the Sargus. And steel wheel has been knocking these designs out of the park. Uh, they're D2 flippers, like a lot of the steel wheel stuff is right around 50 bucks. Uh, we're at 51 on the Cobalts and just over 55 on the Sargus. And I'll, I'll start with the Cobalt. It's a pretty cool little Got sort of a stubby aesthetic to the blade, and it's under two inches, so that's a good compliance option for some of you folks out there. You can get it either with a stonewashed finish or with this black stonewashed finish, as well as a couple of different handle colors, like blue and black uh, G10 handles are also available, and the, a couple of different black variants, actually. Each one has a different colored backspacer to accent it. Uh, but it's, as I said, 51 bucks, D2 steel. It's a little blade, but it flips really nicely, I think. Single position pocket clip, right side tip up only, and you got a little bit of a lanyard hole protruding or, or as part of the backspacer that protrudes out the back. Uh, it does also have a finger hole or a thumb hole for opening. Works well. I can't quite get it to reliably do the, uh, the middle finger flick. Not the best at it anyway. Your mileage may vary, but it flips really nicely. Steel wheel cobalt, 51 bucks. The other new steel wheel, as I said, is the Sargus at just over $55. Same kind of materials again. We've got G10 handle scales, D2 steel, satin, or sorry, stonewash or black stonewash, a few different colors. Uh, the black ones have, you know, different colored backs or uh, barrel spacers, uh, much as the way they've done several, several of their models in the past. And if you've been paying attention, you remember the Shaula that just came out not too long ago? This one's very similar to that. It's a little bit wider overall. It's not quite as narrow, uh, and it turns down just a little bit more, I think, than the Shaula. Um, but this knife, you've got that upswept trailing point rather than the drop point, or was it clip point of the... Uh, anyway, you can look it up. Liner locking knife, uh, both of these are, in fact. And again, great action. And nothing to complain about whatsoever. Uh, and great price. Good materials. What more can you ask for? Good stuff. Deep carry pocket clip on this one too. I almost forgot. Um, it is reversible, right side or left side, tip up, and that's gonna allow you to carry a good amount of blade with just about nothing sticking up. So that's pretty nice. Next up is a couple of new knives, some non-locking knives from Leong Ma Designs. Now I don't wanna call them slip joint uh, because they're not, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, these are actually fairly similar to the ZT that just came out, the 230. So it doesn't have a back spring. It actually has two detent balls, each on either side of the blade that interface with it to give it a little bit of resistance there. So it's sort of a cross between a friction folder and a slip joint, if you want to think of it that way. Um, you have a little bit, it's not so much friction from the handles itself, it's more from those detent balls. But I'd say it's more friction folder than slip joint, personally. Um, we're at 275 on this knife, and we've got several different blade options as well as handle options. I've got two of them here in front of me. We've got the spear point as well as the sheep's foot profile. There's also a clip point profile that has sort of a straight clip or a mostly straight clip if you're into that instead. Now, as far as the handles go, they're all on a G10 base or G10 platform if you want to call it that. This one has orange with a brown micarta inlay. We've also got black G10 with a green micarta inlay as well as black G10 with a carbon fiber inlay. And those inlays are on both sides, so it looks quite nice. I'm gonna pick this uh, Micarta one back up, this orange one, because I think it looks really cool. It's a nice different or a nice color combination there. Um, and as I said, this is a non-locking knife, M390 steel, and let's see, we're under three inches on this knife too. 
folds up fairly easily. We've got a fuller, small fuller on each side that acts as a nail nick. Now you can either open that two-handed, as you would typically expect, or you can kind of pinch with these two fingers and finish with your thumb opening it up. Now the detent isn't super strong on this knife, so just keep that in mind when you're using it. But we do have a full-size finger choil here that lets you put your finger there while you're using, so if it does happen to disengage, you're not going to be in too much trouble. But again, as I said, M390 steel with almost a full flat grind, so you're going to have pretty high performance, even though it is a little bit thicker than some knives. It's not quite, or it's a, uh, looks a bit over an eighth of an inch, I think, just by my, uh, my eyeball calipers here. But it fits in the hand quite nicely. Uh, you've got, like I said, because of that finger troll, you've got that full grip going on, so you can really, um, really control the blade quite easily. Uh, and a nice backspacer going on, too. Adds a fair bit of rigidity as well as a hidden lanyard attachment point buried between the handle scales there. And lastly on the end, a deep carry pocket clip. Reversible too, so you can carry it in either pocket, varies nice and deep, and you've even got the nice uh, kind of ball bearing end to the clip as well. So very low friction when you're actually pulling it out, but a good amount of retention even, even considering that. Looks pretty cool too, I think, certainly. But anyway, like I said, the Leong Ma Designs Traveler 275, pretty cool knife. All right, next up we got a couple of new Kaisers, and the first is a titanium frame lock flipper with a lot of really cool texturing, really cool milling action going on. This is the Marshall Noble Vindicator, and we're at about 180 bucks, or just under 180 bucks on this knife. We got a really broad kind of reverse tanto shape, uh, maybe clip point, however you want to refer to it. A lot of belly here, S35VN, stonewashed finish, a little, a little over three and a half inches of blade, so you can get a lot of work done with this knife for sure. It's a bigger knife, or it's, at least it's on the, uh, the larger end of a mid-sized knife, but it's really light. You know, these titanium frame, this titanium frame is actually skeletonized out on the inside. It's milled, or has pockets milled out of it to remove a lot of the weight. And the first thing I noticed when I picked this up was just how easy it was to carry, how lightweighted it was. Like, really impressed, actually. Um, but I really like that texturing as well. It carries through onto the back, onto that pocket clip. So even when you're not using it, with that in your pocket, it makes a bit of a statement for sure. Now on the back of it too, we do have the, uh, the back spacer that extends out the back a little bit. You get your lanyard hole there. You also get kind of like this meat tenderizer. SOG might call it a persuader tool if you were watching our video last week. Um, but definitely a little bit something there that might make someone think twice about uh, coming after you. But it's a Kaiser, so you know it flips well. Got a nice bit of finger tab here, works both as the finger guard when it is open, but you've got that choil up front, not super big. Uh, my fingers are maybe a little bit too big to, to kind of really choke up on, but I can get my fingertip up there no problem, get a little bit more control of that tip, which is pretty broad overall. Uh, but that little bit of control is appreciated because you do have that little bit of extra belly going on, makes it real easy to still use the point of the Kaiser Vindicator. So next up is another Kaiser. It's another titanium frame lock flipper, and it's another knife right under 180 bucks. It's the Quell by Kevin Kellerman. So the overall aesthetic is a little bit cleaner than the Vindicator. It's not quite as busy with that, uh, that aggressive milling that's going on on the scales. We've got more straight lines. As well as this, you could call it a reverse Tonto. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a sheep's foot though. Again, we've got S35VN. A little bit over three inches, so not quite as long. Nice stonewashed finish, which I love. Love stonewashed finishes overall. And with the taper to the handle, it's gonna slide into your pocket pretty nicely, I think. And even though it's not a deep carry clip, it is a milled pocket clip, um, it's not gonna have too much sticking up above your pocket. So it's not gonna be too shouty or too brazen. I should mention the Vindicator was a single-sided pocket clip too. Both of these are right side carry with a tip up blade orientation. But like that knife, the Quell certainly flips awesomely as well. Just a little bit of a cleaner aesthetic, a little bit of a different shape. But both of them are great knives, and like I said, right under 180 bucks right now. What's that? You say you want another titanium frame lock flipper? How about a Best Tech? We've got a new entry or a new variant in their Emperor line of knives. This one's also right around 180 bucks, actually just over. We're at 184 right now. But we have S35VN again black stone washed finish, and a really cool anodized titanium frame. We've got this cool blue and gold look, and we've got a bit of an orange peel texture going on with the, uh, 
with the, the texture itself, which is kind of neat. Uh, you don't see that too much. Usually you'll either see like bead blasted or flat, or you'll have some actual intricate milling. But this is definitely, it's somewhere in between, and I really like it. Got gold accents on the back spacer, as well as the milled pocket clip, which is right side tip up only again. But the defining feature of all the Emperor knives is this really cool cutout right here. Now what they've done, they've actually milled out a circle on the inside of the scale and inlaid another, uh, an accenting piece of metal. I think it's titanium, we're not actually 100% sure. And they fit that little disc of metal in after they've actually milled out this geometric pattern. Definitely has a bit of Asian influence, at least to my eye, and it looks really cool, and it definitely elevates this. Uh, between that and the orange peel texture, it's something a little bit different. But again, performance is top notch, got bearings in the pivot, a really nice blade shape, very usable, excellent materials at a pretty good price at just under 185. So that's all the titanium frame lock flippers for this week anyway, but we have some more titanium for you. We've got a new release from MKM, the Maniago Knife Makers Guild. This one particular, in particular was made by Mercury and it's a new design by Lucas Burnley and it's called the Selena. And this one is actually a slip joint knife. The blade itself is under 3 inches, M390 steel like a lot of premium Italian knives. And we've got that nice crown spine that then transitions or carries through to the back spring of the slip joint itself. So you have that crowned arced look going all the way down the back. And then it even protrudes a little bit at the end, which you see that a lot on, on frame locks, you know, like that Kaiser there. But it's not something you really see too much on slip joints. Usually that back spring is anchored and buried within the handle. So that's a, a little cool little extra bit of uh, innovation or a little extra bit of style there, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, but I mentioned titanium. We have titanium bolsters on this knife, as well as two different inlay options. We've got the Santos mahogany wood here, as well as a micarta option. Or you can get it with a frame entirely made out of aluminum or upgrade a bit to titanium. And I especially like the bronze titanium of this version right here. Prices range from $99 up to $129, depending on which version you choose. But you're getting a really cool, really cool modern slip joint. Walk and talk is good. Nice half stop along the travel. Snaps, snaps closed fairly nicely. Now we have a blade cut out for opening, and obviously the easiest way is to use two hands. It is a little more difficult on this particular, ni particular knife to use a one-hand opening method, but it's kind of similar to that Leong Ma, but you're going to have to pinch it out with your two uh, thumb and forefinger or thumb and middle finger, but because it is a full slip joint, you're going to have a little bit more resistance. So I don't really recommend opening it that way. This is primarily a two hand opening knife. Now they've kept it nice and clean. It doesn't have a pocket clip, so you can just slip it into the, your pocket if you like, but they actually all come with a very nice leather pocket sheath, which is magnetic. So you just slip your knife there in the morning, slip this in the whole sheath into your pocket. This just pulls out. So that can slip on. You have this sticking out outside your pocket, holding it nice and secure. It's very easy to reach in and pull the knife out and the sheath stays there in your pocket. I was trying it out earlier. Worked very well. Um, but that's a very cool solution to carrying a slip joint without a pocket clip, but having the modern convenience of a pocket clip. I think that's pretty cool. Next up, we've got a bunch of new automatic knives from Hogue. This is the new Compound OTF. And they're all essentially variations on the theme. We've got several different blade finishes, a couple of different blade shapes, and several different handle finishes between both of them. Uh, we got S30V steel in both a clip point and a tanto, available either with a stonewashed finish, as you see on the tanto here, or a black PVD finish like you see on this clip point blade right here. Now that S30V is a nice upgrade over the 154CM that we see on a lot of other automatics these days. But the real story of the compound, and actually the thing that gives the compound its name, is the handle construction. This is actually a hybrid between aluminum internals and a G10 chassis on the outside. Let's them get a good amount of strength while keeping the weight down. And I like what they've done with the, with the profile of it too. It's not just a simple, straight OTF type of design. They've done a little bit extra with it. This is an Allen Elishowitz design, so that's not unexpected. But the action is very good. Hogue does a great job, I think. The handles themselves has kind of a, a honeycomb milling pattern in the G10. Adds a little bit of traction. It's not super aggressive though, so it's not gonna cause you hot spots. But you can definitely feel there's a little bit more grip when you're if you push your thumb along the side like I do when I'm testing grip out a bit. 
But what I really like, in addition to those cool, that cool steel upgrade and everything else that's cool about it, I've got some really cool G10 patterns, including this black g Mascus color, which is kind of a black and white camo. There's a green g Mascus option that has more of a kind of a woodland camo look, as well as your typical black and that sort of black handles and that kind of thing. But it's got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, which anyone will tell you who's using OTF on the regular, is it's a phenomenal option just for not just for rapid deployment but it works well for lefties or righties because especially when the clip is ambidextrous like that it's flipped or especially when the clip can be flipped over it's a very ambidextrously usable design because it's not biased to either hand it's quite nice now as far as pricing goes this is another opportunity for you folks that are watching this video that when it comes out these are actually on sale right now, and they're gonna be on sale through Cyber Monday into the Tuesday of next week, December 3rd. And we're at about 275 up to just over 290, depending on which option you choose. So if you get it in this period, you can save a little bit of money before the prices go back up. So finally, one new survival fix blade to show you this week. It's the Eka RTG-1. Now Eka or EKA is very well known for their Scandinavian designs, but the RTG-1 is actually made in the USA, and it's actually made by Rowan, which is the same folks who make the SE blade. So you know, like, that's some really good high performance you're gonna get out of this package. And the blade itself, we're just under six inches, we're about 5.7-ish, full flat grind, 1095 steel, and you can either get G10 or Micarta handles with this. And they're definitely girthier than you'll get from the typical SE handles if you're kind of comparing apples to oranges with the, uh, the Rowan made knives. So it's gonna fill the hand a little bit more than most of those SE designs do, at least out of the box. In addition to your choice of G10 or Micarta, you've got different blade options. I've got the tan powder coated version here. Prices on these were at 221. You can save a little bit of money if you want. You can actually get these knives without handle scales and they'll give you some paracord to wrap it with. Uh, and those are at 187 right now. And I don't have it here, but they've also got a, a nice green, uh, green powder coated color, which I think looks pretty cool. As far as the sheath hardware goes, we've got a nice Kydex sheath. Taco style, it's folded over. We've got Blade Tech compatible hole spacing here, so you'll be able to stash that however you wish. It doesn't come with a tech lock. It does come with a clip plate, however, so that you can, and you can rearrange that in a few different ways and carry it that way or upgrade to that tech lock. But either way, solid tool made in the USA, ECA RTG1. So those are the highlights, at least, of the new stuff that's hit our shelves in the last week. If you want to keep up to date on all of them, make sure you're signed up for our newsletters. And this week especially, and through the holidays, make sure you're following us on social media, because that's where we're going to be putting out word on a lot of the great sales and special deals, flash deals, heavy discounts. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up, so you're not going to want to miss it. Meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, you can click the links in the description below to head over to KnifeCenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson signing off. See you next time. Hey, see, 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 see. We've got a clip point. That is totally a drop point. We weren't great with shapes in school. That's why I never watched that Shape on Water movie. Going a little fast, aren't I? Sounds like a you problem. <laughs>